Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. An unusual chain of events landed a Sioux Falls man back behind bars. It all started Monday morning on East 6th Street near Meldrum Park. Police say 35 year old Terrence Whitehead was speeding and rear ended another car. After the crash, both cars stopped and police say Whitehead yelled at the other driver and took off. The alleged victim followed Whitehead and called 911. Police say that led to Whitehead smashing the alleged victim's car with a trailer hitch. When police arrived, they discovered Whitehead was on parole, didn't have a license, and was allegedly driving a stolen car. He faces a long list of charges and is expected to be in court this afternoon. In weather, it will warm up eventually, probably sooner rather than later, exactly by how much and when, Adam? Well, it's not entirely clear right now, huh? Well, not in the short term. I'll tell you that much. It is going to be rather chilly over the next couple of days, but we do eventually right the ship as we head toward Easter weekend. Until then, yeah, bundle up. There's Lake Madison. Certainly uh, looks like winter with the snow there on the little jetty there. But you also notice uh, the one thing that's reminding us that no, it's not winter. And that lake is not frozen over in any capacity. But also notice the wind. That is going to be something that we need to keep an eye on because, well, we're going to have some wind chill factors to deal with. Meanwhile, it looks like we're in mid-season form at Terry Peak. 19 degrees in lead with a north wind at 3 miles per hour. I am not going to lie. I am marginally jealous because I really wish I could have got my skis out this winter. But... Uh, maybe next time. 21 right now for Worthington as well as Brookings, Huron, Watertown, Mitchell, Aberdeen, and Ortonville, along with Pier and Valentine, all at 19. 24 at the airport, 22 Yankton, 16 for Rapid City, as well as Spearfish. You notice that wind, though, for central and eastern Kelowna and especially sustained at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And that's not counting any gusts we've had over the last about 60 minutes or so. It's making a feel even colder out there. So bundle up if you must be out and about. It's also why we have some blowing snow concerns in place, even though outside there may be a few spits of snow. That's really going to be just about all she wrote for this particular system. However, we do still have one winter weather advisory to talk about. It's for southwestern Minnesota and portions of northwestern Iowa as well. This goes in place for about another hour, mainly due to concerns regarding blowing snow with poor visibility and drifting along roadways. Even outside of the advisory, we still could see that. So you will want to keep that in mind as you go about the rest of your day. Beyond that. Partly to mostly cloudy temperatures in the 20s to near 30 for southeastern Kelloland, and it doesn't get a whole lot better up to the north. Low to mid 20s in the northeastern part of the area with that wind very much making its presence known out west. Slightly better if you're in the southwestern corner of South Dakota toward Hot Springs and Custer and to a lesser extent Rapid City you get into the 30s. Everybody else and you're stuck in the 20s even with a little more sunshine. But I did mention we do warm up. I am a man of my word. We'll talk about that coming up in your seven day forecast. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Adam. A long line of businesses is set to participate in the sixth annual downtown Sioux Falls Easter egg hunt. A total of 20 businesses ranging from restaurants to gift shops to a cat cafe are helping celebrate the season with a variety of goodies. Lots of candy. Uh, so candy. Um, we also encourage businesses to do any other activities that they want to host on their own. Um, so, you know, a couple places are doing some coloring contests. Um, so really just some activities all across the board. The Easter egg hunt is Saturday from 1130 a.m. to 330 in the afternoon in downtown Sioux Falls. We've been sharing stories about how parents have been scrambling to find new daycare providers in the aftermath of recent closures in Sioux Falls. But the providers themselves have also been scrambling to hire new workers to handle the influx of additional enrollments. We've hired a lot of different roles. Um, I would say what we've seen a lot of for applicants are assistant teachers and lead teachers and those youth development specialists. We've seen a lot of applicants in those roles, which are greatly needed. These are the people that work directly with kids. In tonight's Eye on Kelly Land, you'll meet one of the new hires at the Boys and Girls Club of the Sioux Empire. Find out why she's drawn to teaching students in daycare tonight at 10. The NTSB is headed to Baltimore after a cargo ship slammed into a bridge overnight, collapsing the structure and sending construction workers and possibly vehicles into the water. Two people were rescued. Officials say at least six people are unaccounted for. Crew members on the ship are okay. Ryan Hughes reports now from Baltimore County. 
Video shows the moment a cargo ship plowed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. CBS News has confirmed the massive container ship lost propulsion before impact. The entire bridge, the entire key bridge is in the harbor. We know there were individuals on the bridge at the time of the collapse working on the bridge. Now the Coast Guard and other agencies are racing to find possible survivors. In addition to workers on the bridge, video shows multiple vehicles on the span. And our response teams are doing everything in our power to rescue and recover the victims of this collapse literally as we speak. The 974-foot cargo ship called the Dolly left Baltimore Harbor about 20 minutes before the crash. At one point, crew members on board notified state officials that the ship had lost propulsion and that hitting the bridge was possible. But we're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse that uh, that we had officials who were able to to begin to stop the flow of traffic. Video shows most of the lights on the ship going out just before the accident. The steering system on a um, on a ship like this is hydraulically powered. And so when you lose electrical power, you're going to lose the, the hydraulics. Of course, the rudder is uh, hydraulically powered. Officials say the workers on the bridge were repairing potholes. A facility has been set up with mental health professionals for family members to deal with this tragedy. Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Baltimore County, Maryland.